I will worship you. It's a simple song the Lord gave to us. I will worship you. I will worship It's a simple song the Lord gave to us. I will worship you. I will worship It's a simple song the Lord gave to us. I will worship you. I will worship It's a simple song the Lord gave to us. I will worship you. I will worship It's a simple song the Lord gave to us. I will worship you. I will worship It's a simple song the Lord gave to us. I will worship you. I will worship It's a simple song the Lord gave to us. I will worship you. I will worship It's a simple song the Lord gave to us. I will worship you. I will worship It's a simple song the Lord gave to us. I will worship you. I will worship It's a simple song the Lord gave to us.
I will worship you. It's a simple song the Lord gave to you. Good morning and welcome to the morning miss this week. It's the last week of March, and as we said, it's our week of emphasis on prayer and warfare. It's a WWW week, and we are so excited and so delighted uh, this Wednesday morning. How are you doing? I hope that you have woken up strong, hopeful, and that you have faith in your spirit that everything is going to turn out all right. Glory be to God. Well, even if you don't believe, God has promised you that the latter shall be greater than the former and he has said the path of the just man is like the shining light that shines brighter and brighter hallelujah so we believe the report of the lord is so good to have each and every one of you who was tuned in this morning so good to have you let me know that you are here we're just about to get into prayer of course we've started a bit late again my apologies but um it's still going to be a very good morning let us know that you are here glory be to jesus christ if you're watching us from abroad, of course, it's morning in Nairobi. Uh, it's 6.15, there about East African time, which is GMT plus 3. So wherever you are right now, for some of you, you're just about to get to bed. For some of you, you are uh, still in your uh, early night. But, well, we are glad that you are tuned in right now. As is our custom, we begin with thanksgiving. The scripture says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and with praise. So we just begin right now by thanking God for this day. This is the day that the Lord has made. We rejoice and we are glad in it. So go ahead and wherever you are right now, just thank God. In this season, if there is one thing that we have had to learn, is to be grateful for each and every day. You don't take it for granted that you woke up in the morning. You don't take it for granted that your family members are awake and they're alive. You don't take it for granted that you went out and came back. You don't take it for granted that you went to sleep and you woke up. So go ahead and give God thanks this morning for the gift of life, the breath of life in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you today. We thank you for life. We thank you for an opportunity to do your will. We thank you for an opportunity to do your, to fulfill your purpose, to go out and work. We thank you for another opportunity to raise our children, another opportunity to do business, another opportunity to have the work of the ministry. We thank you for another opportunity to pursue goals and dreams we thank you for another opportunity to see your goodness and your kindness we are grateful this morning that you woke us up we are grateful this morning that you have given us strength soundness of mind that you have given us health in the name of jesus we are grateful this morning we are grateful in namashara bozaya jesus we thank you thank you for life thank you for grace thank you for purpose thank you thank you for this day thank you because you have given us another opportunity scripture says time and chance happens to all men you have given us time and you have given us another chance and so we worship you this morning we acknowledge that there is absolutely no way we would do this without you we acknowledge that if it was not for you who was on our side the enemy would have swallowed us up quick we acknowledge oh god it is your hand that has kept us and sustained us we acknowledge that it is of your mercy see that we are not consumed we acknowledge oh god that the raging fires of the enemy could not quench us because you promised in isaiah 43 verse 1 that when we go through the waters they will not overwhelm us when we go through the fire the fire will not burn us because you will be with us so we acknowledge right now that it is you who has held us through more than one year down the line you have held us through the various waves of the pandemic it is you who has held us through the tough seasons financially the tough seasons socially you are the one who has held us through tough seasons even things that have challenged our spirituality it is you who has held us through glory be to your name so we magnify you jesus we glorify you this morning we exalt you we bless your name in the bush and the Mosiah. we bless your name today we bless your name today for the days we did not think that we would make it for the times that we did not know what to do for the days that we did not have any idea of what decisions to make for the times that we did not have any knowledge by ourselves for the times that we faced the crossroads and you spoke to us and said this is the way walk in it 
do not turn to the right or to the left for every time that you have raised us up from the bed and every time that you have given strength to our feet for every time that you have given energy to our minds every time that you have put vitality to our soul and purpose to our lives for every time that you have placed opportunities to our days for every time that you have taught our fingers to fight for every time that you have given us the victory for every time that you have held us up not to quit for every time that you have sustained us with your own provision for every time God that you caused us to walk through spaces that we did not even imagine we could for every time that we didn't even have the strength to pray but you still out of your goodness and your kindness showed us your mercy we are grateful today we are grateful this morning we are grateful Lord we exalt your name we magnify it we bless you Jesus we bless you you are alone a God and worthy to receive all glory, honor, adoration, and praise. You alone are holy. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who is and was and is to come. How marvelous, how powerful, how excellent, how magnanimous is our God. We lift you up. We bless your name. We glorify you. We exalt you. She did it. Ebo zagare Maria Budaga. Libere masuri andara rara bosaya. Likere bosaya rara rara boshata le masaya. God, we love you. Ikare boshata. Ligere bosaya. God, we love you. God, we honor you. God, we worship you. Ikada bosh kabadiha. Libere ndoro zokotori amazigaria. Libere ndoro zori anana raba seketaba. Ligada da da bosha. To the one and only God, the most high God, the eternal, immortal, invincible. We bless your holy name. There is no one like you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If you've joined us, kindly share with us this. Share the stream if you can. Uh, host a watch party. Invite somebody. Uh, invite your friends and your neighbors. If... Uh, and everybody else that you know, the people in your fraternity, just invite them. Send them the invite right over now in the name of Jesus Christ. Good to see everyone that is joining us this morning to the glory of God, even as we get into the place of prayer. Well, the scripture last night we did read something in uh, uh, in, in Second Kings, Second Corinthians, sorry, chapter four and verse thirteen. Paul says that we have the spirit of faith. Therefore, we have, as it is written, we have believed, therefore we speak. Sometimes you have got to make certain declarations uh, by yourself. You've got to make declarations by yourself. And especially when you are facing various challenges. One time I did talk about what um, I call the prophetic license, which is God allowing you to make decrees. In Job 22 and verse 29, uh, 28, he says, You shall decree a thing, and it shall be established for you. And he says in verse 29, Where there is a casting down, you will say, There is a lifting up. And so this morning, we're going to make certain decrees as well. Uh, and in Psalm 91, in Psalm 91 and uh, verse 9, in Psalm 91 and verse, uh, verse 10 to verse 12, the scripture says, uh, especially that first part in verse 10, the scripture says that no evil shall befall you and no plague shall approach your tent. No evil shall befall you and no plague shall approach your tent. And I want you to take this moment this morning just to pray this over your life, your family, over your community, your friends, your neighborhood in the name of Jesus Christ. The scripture says no evil shall befall you. In the English Standard Version, it says no evil shall be allowed to befall you and no plague shall come near you. And the NIV says, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent. Uh, the the, the uh, New American Standard Bible says, no evil will happen to you. Nor will any plague come near your tent. Whichever version and translation, the King James, the King James of it says, there shall no evil befall you. And 
nor plague shall come near your dwelling. I want you to make that declaration right over now as we stand on that word by faith in the name of Jesus Christ. That you're going to make a declaration right over now in the name of Jesus. We are a faith people. We believe, therefore we decree. We believe, therefore we decree. Remember I just said that in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 13, he says, we also having the same spirit of faith as it is written, we have believed, therefore we have spoken. So we believe the word of God and we speak the word of God. So I want you to make declaration right over now that no evil shall befall you and no plague, no calamity shall come near your tent. No pandemic shall come near your house in the name of Jesus. Raise your voice right over now wherever you are and begin to declare that in the name of Jesus. Father, you have said it in your word. We believe your word, so we declare your word. All your promises are yes and they are amen. There is none of your promises that does not come to pass. Your word is true. Your word is faithful. Your word is eternal. Your word is powerful. There is nothing that you have said that you do not mean and there is nothing that you mean that you have not said. You are not a man to lie. You are not the son of man to change your mind. If you have said it, you will do it. If you have promised, you will cause it to come to pass. The word of God, the scripture is full of promises that you made and kept. And so we stand on that word. We stand on that character that you have, that you do not lie, and it is impossible for you to lie. We stand on your nature. We have faith in whom you were. We have faith in what you say. We have faith in your word. We declare and decree this morning that no evil shall come upon us. No evil shall befall us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we're speaking divine protection over us in the name of Jesus. Divine protection beyond what man can do. Divine protection in the name of Jesus. Libo we declare over our children, declaring over our siblings, declaring over our parents, declaring over our houses, declaring that over our people and communities and church folk, and we declaring that over our neighborhood, declaring it over our colleagues, those that we come into contact with. We make the declaration today in the name of Jesus, no evil shall befall us. No plague shall come near us in the name of Jesus. It is not permitted to come. It is not permitted to come near us in the name of Jesus. That is your word. That is your word. So I declare to every form of disease, Every ailment, every plague, every pandemic, you have no permission to come near us in the name of Jesus. It is illegal for you to try and come close to us in the name of Jesus. Spirits of infirmity, you have no permission to come. Spirits of affliction, you have no permission to come. No evil shall befall us. No weapon from the gases shall be able to prosper. We are protected by God, covered by His grace, surrounded by His mercy, upheld by His hand, protected by His angels, standing on His word, believing in His person. Demonic attacks, we command you, turn around and go in the name of Jesus. You were not permitted to come. Demonic attacks on the mind, on the body, spirits of depression. Oh, we command you to this, this morning, we command you this morning that you turn back and leave. You are not permitted. You have 
have no entry. You have no pass. In the name of Jesus, you are illegal. Shadabolo Kotaya, Lebele Kotamanagade, Repatoba Sigande, Ligandolo Zaya, over this nation, we declare right now that it is illegal, illegal for the plague to come ac across this nation and against this nation. It is illegal. Ishandolo Saya, Legede Goda Gadama, Librando Rebo Saya, Deketeleno Sikando, Lebrando Kotaya Madagada, Shendelebo Zaha. We command unclean spirits to leave in the name of Jesus. Unclean spirits leave in the name of Jesus. Unclean spirits leave. Shedebebebebosha, Legadadadadaboshika, Rikandoro Sara, Legadadadadadabosha. We expel you in the name of Jesus. Legodoshanda, Nigandorobo Sikata, sicknesses that are hiding to manifest in weeks. We expel you in the name of Jesus. Attacks that are hiding to happen in the next few days. We expel you. We command in the name of Jesus that let your works be destroyed. You are illegal in the name of Jesus. Accidents that are planned against the people of God. God, we came against you this morning. Ikarobo shata, lebere morobo zigere rabosa, le katala majaya, losses and failures that have been designed against our businesses. We come against you now in the name of Jesus. No evil shall befall us. La kosha, le katosai, le prekota, rikando sita, le keterosha, ribaro soria, remanderero saka. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, we bless your name, God. We bless your name, God. The scripture says in verse 11, For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. He will command his angels. The new King James says he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Glory be to God. We stand in faith on that word. He will command his angels to guard you. The Amplified Bible says, For he will command his angels in regard to you to protect and defend and guard you in all your ways. I want you to just activate this this morning. The angelic host is at your service, ladies and gentlemen. The scripture says he will give his angels charge over you that they may protect you from everything that would try to harm you. I just want you to take a moment. You may have prayed this prayer before, but the word of God is the word of God. I want you to take a moment right over now and just make that declaration. Activate angelic protection over yourself, over your house, over your household, over your friends, over the place that you are in, over this nation. Activate angelic hosts in the name of angelic protection in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's just go ahead right over now. You have said it in your word that angels will have charge over us. You have said it in your word that they will protect us, that they will harm us, that, that they will ha they will protect us from every harm, that they will that they will keep us, that they will guard us in the name of Jesus. You have said in your word that they will keep us from every harm and every heart and every danger, that they will watch over us, that they will not allow us to to dash our feet against the stone. So today we activate angelic activity and protection in the name of Jesus over our children who go out and come back in, over our relatives who go out and come back in, over our siblings, family members, community people, church people who go out and come back in, that none of them is going to contract sickness and disease and none of them is going to spread it in the name of Jesus because the angelic host are protecting us. We are not careless, but we are mindful of the words that you have spoken to us. So we live and walk by faith and not by sight. You say they will bear us up in their hands so that we don't dash our feet against a stone. God will bless you this morning.
We honor you, for there is no one like you. How excellent is your name today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory be to God. Amen. Well, I want to get into the teaching of the word. Um, we have just a few more minutes to go and just teach it. We have a few minutes to go before we release each and every one of you. As I said, it's good to have those of you who are joining us this morning, wherever you are joining us from. Uh, the Lord bless you. I see all of you. Uh, the Lord bless you and kindly just share the stream if you can. Glory be to God. Uh, Pastor Philip Mukaminyaga, good to see each and every one of you who have joined us this morning as well. Are we going to go into the scriptures uh, right now for the teaching of the word? You will go for it and, and, and Joyce, it's good to see you this morning as well. Been a while since we caught up on the live. Hallelujah. A lot of things have been happening. Um, a lot of things have been happening. And yesterday I began teaching on the wave of glory. Uh, said from the book of Second Corinthians chapter 4. Second Corinthians chapter 4. And we read in verse 17 that the light affliction which we are enduring now is but for a moment and it is working in us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory and then it says in verse 18 of the second kings the second corinthians sorry chapter 4 it says while we do not look at the things which we see but we look at the things which are not visible for the things which are seen are temporary by the things which we do not see are eternal. We do not look at the things which we see, but we look at the things which we do not see, for the things which we see are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Now, we understand that the life that we live did not begin in the visible. The life that we live did not begin with the physical. The physical is a manifestation of the invisible. The physical is a manifestation of the invisible. And so anytime we are dealing with things in the physical, we have to go back into the invisible in order to address them, if, especially when they are things that we do not like then we have to go back into the invisible and begin to shape and address them so that they get aligned. In Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 3, the scripture says to us that through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God and the things that we now see came from things that we do not see. So even what we see now came from things that are not visible and if we can then see the things that are invisible and begin to declare them, we can shape what we see. The invisible world is not just the domain of the good things that God has promised. Remember, Satan is also a spirit being. And so he operates in the spirit and manifests in the flesh. He is a bit more sensitive in the spirit because he had been with God. He was created to serve God. He was created to minister to God. He was created to be in the presence of God. He understands the operations and the dynamics of the presence of God. He understands the operations and the dynamics of the word of God. He understands government and structure in the kingdom aspect and the kingdom context. He understands a lot of things that have got to do with God. And so even when he comes in as what we call a counterfeit, sometimes we underestimate his ability to sabotage because he first of all gets the information and the knowledge from the realm of the spirit. Then he manipulates it in the realm of the visible. He manipulates that. He will focus on what will create fear and anxiety. He will try to 
cause people to get distracted from what God has said or what God is doing. Remember when he was speaking to Eve in the Garden of Eden, he said to Eve, did God really say that you should not eat of this fruit? Well, he understands what God has said, and then he understands the place that we are at as well. And so he will take what God has said, and he will twist it a little bit, either so that you don't believe it, or so that you believe it in the wrong way. He is a master manipulator. So he will take the word like he went to Jesus and he said, throw yourself down because it is written that angels will bear you up. He knows what God has said concerning you. He knows what promises have been made. He knows what the word of God says. There's sometimes we underestimate him, but he knows what God has said. He knows he he knows what has been promised over you and over the people who are around you over your future he understands that and he knows it so he will take the very same thing and try to manipulate it he will manipulate it so that you either doubt or you totally reject it paul speaking to the galatians says who has bewitched you so that you do not obey the truth it is the manipulation of what these people heard that was causing them not to obey the truth so they had the truth of being saved the galatians they had the truth of being saved but then there was a manipulation to that truth to make them think that if you do not get circumcised then you are not fully saved so it is still the word that was being used but then it is edited and this is how the enemy keeps on playing games with us because he will manipulate truth he knows what has been said and he will manipulate truth so that when you look at things in the visible it looks a little bit as if it aligns to what was spoken but then you will find that there has been a bit of editing on it in fact when he was speaking to jesus in matthew chapter 4 and verse 8 he says if you will bow a little then i will give you the kingdoms of this world he never comes in and stretches truth too far he will never stretch it too much he will just add a little spice to it and he will add a little spice just a little thing in there if you add just a little bit more salt than you needed to add the food will taste different if you added just a little more sugar than you need to add it will taste different i use uh, I, i'm still trying to get myself out of sugar but i use one spoon but if you if you add even a quarter to the one spoon i will tell i will tell that you put more sugar than you should because my taste glands have gotten used to one sugar and so the enemy will just put something little that will twist what God has concerning your life. Most of the times, people are blind to the workings of the enemy. They don't see when he subtly adds in his own thought to what God has said. They don't see when he is subtly beginning to get into their mind and their emotions. They don't see when the enemy is subtly just getting in and building up his own momentum so that he can control people. You see, the desire of the enemy over time has always been to have control. And so he has used various things and tried to use various things to control the people of God but then we who have believed the scripture says that we who have believed we have escaped certain things so we are supposed to be protected and immune to certain operations of the enemy when Jesus came to the earth and I'm just connecting quite a number of things together you see when Jesus came to the earth one of the things that he came to do was to break the hold of the enemy over the people he came to break the hold of the enemy over the people in hebrews chapter 2 and verse 14 the scripture says for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood he also himself likewise took part of the same jesus had to become just like us so that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death and that is the devil the devil had the power of death but how did he have the power of death over the people 
It is by manipulating what God has said. It is by manipulating the evidence, by manipulating the visible, by subtly beginning to put in his thought and put in his mind into what God has said. And as the people would receive it, they would be receiving poison. Remember, when he first showed up in the garden, he showed up through the serpent. That is very instructive because the serpent is representative of a poisonous being. And so the enemy brings in his poison, his poison. It is his thought pattern. It is his philosophy. It is his doctrine. He brings in his ways, his ideas, mixes that up with what God has said. That's why Paul would say to the Colossians in chapter 2 and verse 8, he says, beware of philosophy and ideology lest any man will deceive you because Satan subtly begins to capture people by their way of thinking and belief. And so so when he manipulates what you see, when he manipulates what is visible to you, you begin to believe what he says. Now the scripture says to us that in that Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 14, as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also likewise became part of the same. And that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, and that is the devil. So that by Jesus going into the the grave, Jesus was breaking the hold that Satan had over people with death. Satan had had gripped people with death, and not just death, but in verse 15 he says, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. That verse 15, deliver them who through fear of death. So it is not just that he had the power of death, but then he spread the fear of death. And when fear comes, fear brings torment. Fear causes people not to be able to do anything. Fear brings torment, ladies and gentlemen. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. In Luke chapter 1 and verse 74, Luke chapter 1 and verse 74, the scripture says that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hands of our enemies might serve him without fear, that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. Fear is not of God, ladies and gentlemen. In Romans chapter 8 and verse 15, we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but we have received the spirit of adoption by which we cry Abba Father. Second Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. In first John chapter 4 and verse 18, perfect love casts out fear. So the scripture says that Jesus came to deliver us who through fear of death, talking about humanity, he came to deliver those who through the fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Do you realize how your decisions change when you're afraid? Do you realize how your actions change when you're afraid? Do you realize how your confessions change when you're afraid? Do you realize how your movement is limited when you're afraid? This is how the enemy controls controls us. He controls us through fear and the fear of death. But you see the scripture says Jesus died so that he may destroy the myth and the power of death. How did he destroy that? When he died and rose again, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, when he died and he rose again, he showed to us that death did not have power over us. Death did not have power over us. To the believer, death is a transition. It is a transition. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 15. First Corinthians chapter 15. The scripture says to us in verse let me pick up in verse 10, around verse 10.
But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I by the grace of God which was with me. Therefore, whether it was they or I, so we preach, and so you believed. If Christ is preached that he rose from the dead, how do some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If Christ is preached that he rose from the dead, how do some of you say that there's no resurrection from the dead? Verse 13, if there be no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not reason. You see, this is a very twisted scripture because it says if there's no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not reason. I thought they would say if Christ is not reason, not reason there's no resurrection. But the writer, the author, is very keen to let us know that the only reason Christ rose was because there is resurrection of the dead. So the author says that Christ took advantage of a provision that already existed. So even Christ just came to demonstrate to us that death was not final. This is what he did. That's why scripture says that through death he might he might defeat the devil who had kept us in bondage. Because Christ revealed to us through his resurrection that death was not final. And in verse 14 he says and if Christ is not reason then our preaching is in vain. And your faith is in vain. If there is no resurrection, if death is final, if the enemy has the final say, then Christ is not reason and our preaching is in vain and our faith also is in vain. But the truth is, we know that Christ is reason. And if Christ is reason, then our preaching is not in vain. Regardless of what the enemy does and regardless of how he manipulates the evidence, if Christ is reason, our preaching Preaching is not in vain, and our faith, ladies and gentlemen, is not in vain either. Glory be to God. If Christ is reason, then there is no way our faith is in vain. Somebody said to me yesterday, they asked me, among other people, and they said, if 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 it is predetermined, if the end of somebody is predetermined when they are sick, what use is it then to pray for them? Is there any use to pray for them? if they are going to die anyway. You see, that's how the enemy would want to frustrate us, manipulate evidence, and cause us to begin to think that our faith is in vain. But the devil is a liar. If Christ is not reason, our preaching is in vain. Our faith is in vain. But if Christ is reason, our preaching is not in vain, and our faith is not also in vain, because we don't lose in faith. We don't lose in faith. A believer never loses. Paul says for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. A believer never loses. Verse 15 of that first Corinthians chapter 15 yes and we will be found false witnesses if we testify that God raised up Jesus whom he did not raise if so be that the dead do not rise. Verse 16 for if the dead do not rise then Christ is not raised. Again it does not say if Christ is not raised the dead do not rise. He says if the dead Dead, do not rise, then Christ is not raised. Ladies and gentlemen, the worst place for you to die is on the inside. The worst place for you to die is on the inside. In Matthew chapter 10 and verse 28, the scripture says, Do not fear those who only can touch your body. Do not fear those who can kill your body. But fear him who has the power to destroy both the body and the soul in hell. When the enemy hits your body, attacks your body, he is trying to manipulate evidence so that he can affect your faith, your belief, your confidence and begin to control you through the spirit of fear. When he attacks your body, the scripture says that our outward man is perishing but the inward man is being renewed day by day. Job would say that even if after my skin worms do destroy my body yet in my flesh will I see God. He keeps on saying that. He, he says I know my redeemer lives and even though he slays 
me in Job 13, 15, even though he slays me, yet will I trust him. These are people who understood that Satan is a manipulator of facts because he cannot change the truth. So he will manipulate facts. He will cause the facts to look like they're against the truth and begin to play on your mind to cause you to believe what the facts are saying. But we believe God. We believe God. We believe the dead rise. And that is why Jesus rose. We are becoming better because we have faith in a God who is able to do exceedingly abundantly far above what he, what we ask or think. Now look at verse 17 of that first Corinthians 15. It says, if Christ is not raised, your faith is vain and you are still in your sins. Glory be to God. If Christ is not raised, then you are still in your sins. Verse 19, if only in this life we have hope, then we are of most men, of all men, most miserable. You see, ladies and gentlemen, the thing is this, and that's why God says that do not fear those who can only destroy your body. Yes, we will trust God that things will not happen to us. We believe God that we will not be harmed. But for those of us who have been attacked, we need to let you know again that it is not that your faith is in vain. It is not because you don't have faith. It is not because you did not take caution. We have to understand that the devil is always persistent, that the enemy will come with everything that he has to try and make you doubt the goodness of God, that the enemy will try and manipulate your mind so that you will not believe that God is who he said he is. The way to fight the enemy is to stand on the truth. That's why we do not look at the things that are visible, but we look at the things which are not visible. We don't look at the things that are visible because that realm of the visible can be manipulated. We go back into the things that cannot be manipulated. We go back to the word of God. We go back to the mind of God. We go back to the will of God. We go back to the intention of God. We go back to what he has said. We go back to what we have believed. We go back to what he has promised. We go back to the power of God. We go back to the nature of God. We go back to who he is. We go back to his throne that is exalted above every other throne. For he said, if you come to me, come boldly, and you will receive grace and mercy for the time of need. We go back looking at the things that cannot be changed or manipulated. And we use that against the things that are changing. We use that against the circumstances that are changing. We use that in the days when the count is low. And we use that in the days when the numbers are high. The word of God does not change. It does not change when 10 people die and when a thousand people die. The word of God remains the same. The word of God does not change when the economy is low and when the economy is high. The word of God remains the same. The enemy will play with the figures. will play with our emotions. He will play with our mind. He will play with our belief. He wants us to doubt and to stop believing God and to stop obeying what the Lord has said. But ladies and gentlemen, we do not look at the things that are visible. We look at the things that are not visible. If you look at the visible, you will sink. Oh, Shadabahai. Matthew chapter 14, and I want to close right there, then we will pick it up tomorrow as well. Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14. Glory be to Jesus Christ. If you look at the visible, then you will sink. If you look at the visible, you will sink. You will lose hope. You will lose faith. Glory be to God. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 14. Let me very quickly just find my way into the verse that I need right now. Glory be to God. Matthew chapter 14 verse 20. This is what? Verse 24. Verse 23. When he had sent the multitude away, he went up unto a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the sheep was now in the middle of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. The wind was contrary. So it was being tossed. The wind was contrary. 
And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them, walking on the sea. The same sea that is having turbulence, the same sea that is being tossed with waves, Jesus was walking on it. How was Jesus walking on the sea? Yet the sea was being tossed with waves and the wind, the wind was blowing. Oh, do you realize <laughs> that the sea would not have been tempestuous if there was no wind? Do you realize that the sea was not the problem? The problem was the wind blowing on the sea. That if you remove the wind, the sea would be calm. Do you realize that if you remove the devil from your circumstance, your circumstance will be all right. The problem is not the sea. The problem is the manipulation of the sea by the wind. As long as the wind is blowing, the water will be acting funny. If you want to deal with it, you don't speak to the sea. I'm, a, I'm going ahead of myself. Glory be to God. So in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to, the, to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out. But straight away, Jesus said, Be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered and said, If it is you, bid me to come upon the water. Let me come to you on the water. And he said, Come. When Peter came down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, when he saw the wind, this is where the problem is. Ladies and gentlemen, he was walking on the water until he saw the wind. It is not impossible to walk on the water. It is not impossible to go through that season. It is not impossible to go through that fight. But when he saw the wind, where are you focusing on? When he saw the wind, he was a afraid when he saw the wind he was afraid and he began to sink see this is how we begin to lose our faith this is how we begin to lose our faith oh glory be to god by all means by all means by all means I am affected and I pray for people who are losing loved ones. We have been losing friends and it is a crazy season. But then you see, this is where the believer is tested. If we are going to allow the faces that we know to begin to cause us to sink, if we are going to allow the fact that the numbers of reason to begin to cause us to sink, if it is going to make us stop believing God and begin then to act in fear, that's exactly what the enemy wants. He says in verse 30, God says in verse 30, when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him out and, and said to him, oh, of little faith, why did you doubt? Why did you doubt? Why did you doubt? He doubted because he saw the wind. He doubted. Now verse 31, why did you doubt? And when they came into the ship, the wind ceased. When they came into the ship, the wind ceased. When Jesus came into it, the wind stopped moving because there is no way the devil can operate and take charge when God is in charge. Ladies and gentlemen, the enemy will manipulate what's happening around you. He will blow the wind over your water and you will think that the water has a problem. If you address the wind, if you can stop the wind, the water will be fine. It is the wind that is causing a storm in your marriage. It is the wind that is causing a storm in your business. It is the wind that is causing a storm in your ministry. It is the wind that is trying to bring chaos in your friendships. It is the wind. If you can handle the wind, if you can handle the manipulation, then you will go back into what is promised to you. If you can handle the wind, if the wind will cease, the water will be all right. We do not look at the things that we see. We look at the things that are not visible. We look at the things that we believe. We trust in an unchanging 
God. We trust in the word of God that is eternal. We trust in a God who is able to deliver us from the lowest of the pits. We trust in a God who is able to move the highest of the mountains. We trust in a God who is able to raise men that are dead and rotten. We trust in a God who is able to heal all kind of disease and sickness and affliction. We trust in a God who is able to provide every need according to his riches and glory. We trust in a God who is able to bring things together that were broken and were apart. We trust in a God who is able to change the hearts of men and draw them to himself. We trust in a God who is able to save and deliver nations from the hands of the enemy. We trust in a God who has never lost a battle. We trust in a God who cannot be defeated. We trust in a God who has proved himself faithful from generation to generation. We trust in a God who has a CV. He has a resume. He has reference. He says, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That means if you cannot trust me, then find Abraham and find Isaac and find Jacob. And he still calls himself the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So if Abraham is too far, then he brings himself as the God of the Jesus who went into the grave. And on the third day, he rose up again. The scripture says that it was not possible that he remains in the grave. For God raised him up. If this God raised up Jesus, this God is able to raise you. If he raised up Jesus, he's able to heal you. If God raised up Jesus, he's able to deliver you. If God raised up Jesus, the word says, he that did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how shall he not also freely together with him give us free things to enjoy? If he gave up Jesus, that's the reference point. He says, you that seek up for righteousness, you that follow after the Lord, look to Abraham, to the rock from which you were hewn, to the hall of the pit from which you were dug. Look to Sarah, the mother that bore you. He says, I called him out alone. I blessed him. I increased him. And I made him greater. Ladies and gentlemen, the wind may be blowing, but you can walk on water. The wind may be blowing, but you can walk on water. If you believe the word, if you believe what is said, you can walk on it. You can walk on it. You can do business even in this season. You can raise your family even in this season. You can grow the ministry even in this season. Just don't lose hope and don't lose faith. Don't you focus your eye on what the devil is doing. Yes, we will mourn with those who mourn. Yes, we will encourage those who are broken. But we will not stop believing the Lord God. Just because it hurts us does not mean that it is not true. It cannot shun the desire. Glory be to God. Just because I'm hurting does not mean that God is a liar. Just because I'm broken does not mean that God never meant what he said. The devil is the liar. Don't believe the devil. Don't believe the devil. Don't put your eye on the wind. Jesus said to Peter, why did you doubt? And I come to somebody this morning to ask you today, why are you doubting? The Lord told you, come to me. And you started walking. Keep on walking. He will hold you up by his word. He will heal you by his word. He will sustain you by his word. He will protect you by his word. He will grow you by his word. He will bless you by his word. In the name of Jesus. I've got to finish. I've got to finish. We've got to pick up this tomorrow. But don't you focus on the wind. Don't focus on the wind. Don't focus on the wind. We will get into it tomorrow because we've got to rebuke every wind that is contrary. 
We've got to rebuke every wind that is contrary. The scripture says there was tempest on the sea because the wind was contrary. So we will go against everything that is contrary. Don't miss tomorrow morning. Don't miss tomorrow morning. We're coming against every contrary wind tomorrow in the name of Jesus Christ to the glory of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you are over there never given your life to Jesus Christ, I want to give you the opportunity to give your life to Jesus. All you need to do is to believe that God raised him from the dead. If you confess that, having believed in your heart, if you confess it with your mouth, the scripture says you shall be saved. And so go ahead right over now. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I believe you are the son of God. You came in the flesh, died on the cross, was buried on the tomb, in the tomb. And on the third day, you rose from the dead. I believe you ascended to heaven. I believe you are seated at the right hand of the Father and that you will come back again. So I confess that you are my Lord, my God, and my Savior. Amen and amen. If you have made that confession, you're now born again. Kindly get in touch with us. The number's on your screen. Plus 254721556159. Send a text message, WhatsApp, call, or even just get in touch with us on our inboxes and let us know that you have given your life to Jesus Christ. Also, share your faith, your newfound faith with the people around you. Let them know that you have given your life to Jesus. Thirdly, please get yourself a copy of the Bible. Download one, buy one, borrow one. Just get a copy of the Bible. Begin to read the Word of God in the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, most preferably the Gospel according to John. Begin to read right over there so that you may feed your spirit and get to know the truth so that when the enemy comes in, you have the truth of God to withstand him with. Lastly, please find and join a church. I pray that the Holy Spirit will lead you to a church where you will be taught, you will grow, you will be nurtured, and you will serve. Feel free to join us at New Birth Covenant Church. We're in various locations. You can do a search on Facebook. But right now, this morning, we're coming to you live from Sokimau. You're welcome to join us. We come in every morning, 6 to 7 a.m. with the morning mist. Tuesday nights with a victory service. Thursday with a school of faith like tomorrow 6 p.m. We will be here. And then on Sunday 9 and 11 a.m. respectively for the first and second services. We are off Katani Road. If you're coming from Mombasa Road and you turn at Katani Road, you get to Sokimat. You will see Flappy Kawash. Turn right in front of Flappy Kawash to your right and you will find the church just about 50 meters from the road or 30 minutes from the road. You will find the church. It's orange and glass. If you're coming from the side of Katani, when you get just before Flappy Kawash, take that turn in front of Flappy Kawash, it's a rough road by just a few meters past Capital Village and you will see New Birth Covenant Church in Sokimau. We also have the City Center Church meeting at CPF uh, at the CPE of Ground Floor, that is in Victoria Hall, along Parliament Road. We meet there every Sunday morning, 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. as well for the first and second services. Glory be to Jesus Christ. So get in touch with us. To everyone else, it is time for us to give. It's time for us to give right now. Kindly get your tithe and your offering, and let us just give unto the Lord, who alone is worthy to receive glory and praise. Amen. The numbers are on your screen right over there. So, Father God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus. First of all, for those who have given their lives to Christ, that they will be sustained, they will be upheld, they will be filled with the Holy Ghost, and they will be directed by you to the places of worship that you have ordained for them in the name of Jesus. And to every giver right now, Father, I pray that you will bless the seed, you will multiply it and increase it. To the tither, rebuke the devourer, let no evil befall them. God, I pray that you will cause the works of their hands to be established. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will protect them from every hurt and harm and evil in the name of Jesus Christ. Release grace this morning for people to be productive. Release grace this morning for people to be successful. Release grace this morning for people to be victorious in the name of Jesus Christ. Let there be good news today. Testimonies of your deeds. Protect those who are traveling. Keep those who are in their homes in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. And I come against space of infirmity, sickness, disease, depression, and every attack on the people of God right now. I command healing 
from the inside even to your body in the name of Jesus Christ. For those who are in mourning and sorrow, may the comfort of the Lord and the peace of God be upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. If you're using Payable at 655 if you are using M-Pesa or Wild Remit Wave, it is plus 2547215065695. For those of you who are abroad using Wave or Wild Remit, go ahead. Partner with us. Be a blessing. So significant seeds as we keep on doing the work of God and just sharing the word of the Lord in this season. Glory be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you watch over you. Cause his face to shine upon you. And as we always say from this place, Shalom Irene, peace and prosperity, nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing shall be broken in your life. See you tomorrow, 6 a.m. For those of you who are in Rongai, check out New Birth Covenant Church Rongai page for details because tonight at 6 p.m. tonight, we're coming to you in Rongai for the Covenant Victory Service in Rongai, which will be happening every Wednesday. I will be there tonight, so check out our page, New Birth Covenant Church Rongai, and check out the details right there, and let's meet later on today. But tomorrow for the online church, we are here tomorrow, 6 a.m. Shalom, shalom. I will worship you. I will worship It's a simple song the Lord gave to us. I will worship you. I will worship you. It's a simple song the Lord gave to us.